Paul Muni plays Antonio Tony Camonte, a gangster who quickly rises the ranks of a Chicago criminal organization in the 1920s. He is interested in an aggressive expansion of the organization he works for, but his weak boss doesn't want to stir things up too much. Eventually, their friction boils over and it causes a lot of death. This is 1932's Scarface. Welcome to the Film Student Club channel where I share and rank my favorite things from movies. I also share some nonsensical observations, but more on that later. If you want to get to the meaty parts of the video, there are timestamps in the description below. Today, I will be ranking my favorite sequences involving an X motif and performances from 1932's Scarface. If you're into motorsports or the Olympics, then the ranking system should look familiar. And if you're not, it's pretty self-explanatory. This movie stars Paul Muni as Tony and is directed by Howard Hawks. Written by Ben Hecht, Seton I. Miller, John Lee Maheen, and W.R. Burnett. With cinematography from Lee Carms and L.W. O'Connell. Please be warned that this video contains spoilers, so please go watch the movie and come back if you don't want to be spoiled. The first thing I want to highlight is the motif of an X on screen preceding or following the death of a character. Throughout the film, we get either X's or crosses on the frame whenever someone is about to be murdered or is murdered. With that being said, I want to rank my favorite uses of this motif. For P3, I'm going to cheat and select the ending of a montage where Tony and his crew members are taking out rival gangsters. This sequence takes place after an attempt on Tony, so he retaliates. The sequence ends with three uses of the X motif. The first is this one where a rival gangster is tossed out of a car and is gunned down. As you can see, the street lights and the street sign cast shadows that make an X over the body. A couple of shots later, we have this car chase, and if you look in the upper right hand corner, you will see a sign with an X on it. Then there's a cut to this shot and an X is clearly visible in the upper part of the frame that is kept in the shot as the camera slightly pans to follow the car crash. To culminate the sequence, we get this transition to this X, which is actually a series of X's that form a beam. I'm assuming symbolize this crew of gangsters who are being put up against the wall to be brutally massacred. Even though this sequence may have been violent for the time period this film came out, I think it does a good job of capturing the brutality of these gangsters, all the while showcasing one of the ways Tony rose to power. It's a nice thing to see because one of my gripes with early gangster movies is that we don't really get a sense of them rising the ranks and gaining more power. Scarface does show this with this sequence, so that's why I wanted to showcase the end of the montage and give it some love with P3. For P2, I'm going to go with another sequence, which has two similar uses of the motif. The first one is this shot, where we see the aftermath of the massacre of the gangsters that were lined up against the wall. This time, instead of using shadows to mark an X over a body, the filmmakers decided to use a light source to illuminate an X over the character. In the following scene, we get this set that uses a light source to mark the background where this character is sitting and standing, foreshadowing that he will die. Eventually, he's murdered in a bowling alley. Initially, I thought he bowled a strike, but I couldn't confirm it by counting the bowling pins. It would have been a slightly funny way to implement the X motif if you bowled a strike, because if some of y'all don't know, the symbol for a strike in bowling is an X. In P1, I have the scene where Tony discovers that his right-hand man is with his sister. As you can see, the door number is Roman numeral 10, and in the background, we see an illuminated X. It's a little too much, but I like that they just went for it. I feel like this scene perfectly encapsulates the use of this motif, so that's why I have it at P1. This film had some interesting performances. Paul Muni as Tony is the one that stands out, but there were other actors who did a fine job. It was nice to see Boris Karloff, who previously played the monster in Frankenstein and was the titular character in 1932's The Mummy, play a rival gangster. Even though I like both of those performances, I want to use this segment of the video to highlight other actors that I liked from this film. In P3, I have George Rapp, who played Guino Rinaldo, Tony's number two. I don't know why, but I have a soft spot for number twos in movies and shows. 
Whether it's Tom Hagen in The Godfather, Chris in Heat, or Silvio in The Sopranos, I just gravitate towards those kind of characters, so I immediately developed the liking for George Raff's character. Apparently, this was his breakout role, so I look forward to seeing him in future films. In P2, I have Karen Morley, who plays Poppy. I really liked what she brought to her performance. She brought a certain kind of allure to her character that made her stand out in a good way. Her measured, somewhat subdued acting in this film was a perfect counterbalance to Paul Muni's performance. In my opinion, her performance helped Paul Muni ground his portrayal as Tony because he wasn't as over the top in their scenes as he was in others. In P1, I have Anne Vorshek, that's how she pronounces it, as Francesca Sheshka Camonte. That's a mouthful. I really liked her performance. She showcased a wide range as an actress. She went from a youthful exuberance in the beginning of the film to a mature and jaded person at the end of the film. Yes, Paul Muni is the standout of the film, but Anne Vorshek deserves some praise as well, so that's why I'm giving her P1. Now, onto the nonsensical part of the video. If any of you have played Mario Party, you will know at the end of the game there are random stars given out. So welcome to the portion of the video where I give out awards to random things. The first star is the irony star and it goes to the movie for how it tries not to glorify gangsters even though the film actually ends up doing so. If you read up on the film, you will find that this film had way too much influence from people who wanted to censor it. Without going too much into it, the film was in constant threat from a censor board who wanted the movie changed so that it didn't glorify gangsterism and they demanded scenes be added denouncing it. They also wanted the ending to change. Apparently changes were made including adding the titles in the beginning of the film and this scene where we see a group led by a newspaper publisher talking about the glorification of gangsters and what should be done. Murders, gang war, killings, that's all we read about. You're glorifying the gangster by giving him all this publicity. You're trying to tell me you can get rid of the gangster by ignoring him, by keeping him off the front page. Even the ending was changed, which was originally supposed to have Tony go out in a blaze of glory. All these changes, and I feel like this film still ended up glorifying the characters. I mean, look at how they portrayed Tony. He goes from dressing like this to dressing like this. He carries wads of cash. He even ends up getting the girl in the end. I'm sure that this and other things made this character appealing for audiences. Adding a bunch of silly things didn't make these characters less sympathetic. On that note, the next and final star is the silliness star and it goes to this scene. I'm not saying that a gangster movie has to be devoid of humor, but having scenes like this where one of the gangsters is trying to make a call while a machine gun is raining down on everyone doesn't help the case of not making these characters endearing to the audience. I mean, take this character for example. He is introduced as being Tony's secretary who's not good at the job. He has a hard time hearing the person who's calling and he has a tendency to forget to note whoever was on the other end of the line. In the middle of the machine gun fire, he's trying to make a phone call showing his willingness to get better at his job. In the end of the film, he ends up getting shot but before he goes out, he ends up answering the phone one last time, proud at being able to note the person who was calling Tony. How is the audience not supposed to have sympathy for a character like this who is actually a gangster? This was all a long winded way of saying that even though the movie talks about not glorifying gangsterism, it ends up doing it anyway. Anywho, this was another film I really enjoyed, especially after watching Public Enemies and Little Caesar. I'm not sure which one of these films I liked the most, but I really liked that Scarface actually showed the rise of the main protagonist. Yes, the film had some silly elements to it and over the top moments, but I found it to be an enjoyable watch. For my nonsensical rating of this film, I give it to one Frankenstein Boris Karloff out of one gangster Boris Karloff. If you like what you saw in this video, feel free to subscribe to this channel. What were your favorite things about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to connect, my social media accounts are posted below and all over this channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, have a good rest of your day. Come here. Look at that. You remember what I told you?